सो सिंगल माइक्रोवियल पॉपुलेशन ऑल्सो मतलब लाइक वेन दे आर बिलोंगिंग टू द सेम स्पीशीज एंड यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द ग्रुप ऑफ ऑर्गेनिजम्स विच इज फॉर्मिंग अ सिंगल माइक्रोवियल पॉपुलेशन येस दे डू इंट्रैक्ट विथ ईच अदर मतलब दे आर लाइक दे आर ऑल्सो फॉलोइंग द मोर कॉमनली अप्लाइड एलिज प्रिंसिपल वी जनरली यूज दिस प्रिंसिपल फॉर अदर ग्रुप ऑफ ऑर्गेनिजम्स बट येस uh under certain circumstances you will find that this principle also works well with a typical microbial population like uh, the basic principle says that uh, when the population density is low so at a low uh, density of the population there would be a uh, what you call as a positive effect on the growth rate of the organism so a lower density at a lower density uh, there would be a positive effect and therefore the growth rate of the organisms will increase this will not Uh, happen for a longer period of time because once the growth rate increases the population density it increases and reaches a particular maximum value after that probably uh, this same population uh, which was interacting positively with each other will now start uh, showing negative interactions in, among themselves so at a lower density uh, there is a positive interaction uh, at a higher density above the maximum you can say there would be a negative interaction so this alice principle follows well with a single microbial population this probably uh, you will find uh, it happens with uh, microbes when we are trying to grow the certain group of bacteria on the uh, what you call as the nutrient medium in our laboratories you will find this also generally happens with organisms which are fastidious which require uh, some specific growth factors for their growth it has been observed that uh, only at a particular cell density you will observe that the growth of the organism it takes place to form a visible colony you know that organisms they always try to live in colony whenever whenever we are trying to grow the organism in the laboratory we always find them in colonies that itself is an indication that uh, they are positively interacting with each other and they want to grow together they probably might be having some benefits of growing together therefore they grow together even if the organism is motile you will find that they uh, always tend to form colonies they move they form colonies they move they form colonies so even a motile organism uh, like tends to form colonies it it is a say a strong indication that they are surely having some positive interactions with them as far as the population density is concerned as i told that uh, really is this density that much important for the growth of the organism uh, for different organism the scenarios may be different like for one group of organisms you may consider that um, you are growing a particular organism some of the organisms there are having their cell membranes which are leaky so this particular permeability of the cell membranes has increased for a temporary time being and because of this leaky nature of their cell membrane some of the cell constituents some of the growth factors some of the vitamins or some signals they are coming out and they are actually working for uh, what you call as increasing the growth of the other group of organism not other group actually other organisms of the same group so in a single population these organisms whose membranes are leaky are actually what you call as enhancing the growth of the other organisms in the same group so unless those signals are quite enough to support the growth of the other organisms you will not find a good growth of the organism so you will find that unless the density is that much it may be in nature or it may be in the nutrient medium in your laboratory which will support the growth of the other organisms you will never form a colony so therefore this minimum population density needs to be maintained matlab you can compare this to a similar thing which happens in pathogenesis like a single pathogen a single organism of the pathogen uh, when it enters into our body probably that will not cause a disease when thousands of them they enter probably that results in what is called as the causation of the disease because that helps them to fight and evade our immune mechanisms and then uh, form a what you call as colonization and other stuff and then they are successful in causing the disease similar probably happens when uh, a organism or this group of organisms they lodge a particular natural sample or they lodge on your nutrient medium plate but say for example if you are trying to grow uh, this myxococcus xanthus 
now this particular organism also will uh, like when you are trying to grow this organism on a plate containing casein if the initial cell density which you are inoculating on your plate is uh, equal or less than 10 raised to 3 per ml probably you will find that there will be minuscule or no growth of this particular organism why because this much cell density won't be enough for some of the casein to be hydrolyzed to support the other members of the population to form a visible colony there. So if you want to grow this organism, you will have to have an initial inoculation of more than 10 raised to 3 cells per ml. Probably that will then hydrolyze the casein there and will favor the environment for the growth of the other organism, which will then form a visible colony. This can happen. Or otherwise, like you can have other strategy like don't use casein then. Use a hydrolyzed casein use the hydrolytic products of KC. In that case, probably then this cell density will not matter. So even in a less, what you call as cell density, you will form visible colonies. In nature also, you will find many myxobacteria which are growing. So they also are actually uh, lysing the cellulose, they are uh, lysing the lignin, and they are uh, making these things available for the uh, other members of their same population. But if the initial things are less, See, the natural environment is always diluting the substances which are being produced. Like in the earlier case also I mentioned that these leaky substances were formed. Now, if at all, if it is in water, probably the water will dilute it. So therefore, you will require a higher initial inoculum to uh, what you call as colonize that particular area. Similarly, in this case, you will require initial inoculum to hydrolyze some amount of lignin or cellulose there so that the other members of these myxobacteria can grow there. A more elaborative mechanism you will find in like a very popular example which we call as your like your dictostelium discodium where you find that uh, these organisms when the nutrients are limited these are amoeboid organisms and then they will come together and they will form more complex structures they will form uh, fruiting bodies and then they will form what is called as your mixospores and they will be then what you call as uh, spread to other areas where the nutrients are available so Initial population density, it really plays a major role. This more elaborately you can see uh, when uh, this is happening with your uh, biofilms and other uh, places where uh, they are more resistant to some environmental stresses like some of the antibacterials if they are being produced or uh, some uh, say ultraviolet radiations are there or any kind of stuff which may actually harm. So if they are together, probably they are more protected uh, from uh, such environmental stresses. So therefore, initial population is really important in uh, modulating the growth of the organism. And initially, as I told, that they interact positively with each other till they reach a particular density. When they reach a particular density, probably what might be happening is like we all are aware like of organisms like your lactobacillus, which produces lactic acid, which will then stop the growth of its own like saccharomyces producing ethanol and then that ethanol itself becomes uh, toxic for the growth of the saccharomyces. So some such things may happen when there is a more growth of the organisms. You will find that some elaborative mechanisms which we have studied like um, the genetic exchange mechanisms which are very common in bacteria uh, like your transformation, your transduction, your conjugation. They are also density dependent. This mechanism actually sees that whatever uh, changes have come up or whatever uh, novel things have come up, they, they get transferred to all the population so that one bacterium does not become over specialized. So to prevent this over specialization, they see that whatever specialization they have got, they transfer it to their other members of the population. So they are not biased. So this particular phenomenon also in certain group of organisms obviously you will find that uh, is also density dependent like uh, even if the cells are there they will not conjugate till the cell density has gone about 10 raised to 5 per ml so till the cell density reaches 10 raised to 5 per ml this transfer of genetic material by conjugation say for example will be halted so organisms when they are growing together, they try to see and decide like what they are going to do and what they are not going to do. And probably this is decided by their numbers. So their numbers are really, really important. <laughs> You'll find in certain organisms to keep certain 
populations alive and to keep certain populations dead not keep them dead to kill them actually they use what you call is more elaborative mechanism that itself can be an indication that that is really so important see looking from an ecological point of view having a positive interaction or for having a negative interaction like for our study purposes we call a positive interaction is something which is useful and a negative interaction something which is harmful which is, which is not like good but then looking in a broad ecological sense you will find that everything is happening for the good you know all our holy books they say that whatever happens is happens for a good so having a negative interaction is what like like when i say a predation is happening when i say a competition is happening when i say some organisms are being dying then what is happening is they're trying to control the population because what happens is if these things don't happen there would be overgrowth which will deplete the nutrients and which would ultimately result in the extinction of the species so these negative interactions which we temporarily for a time being we call as negative we're speaking in a broad ecological sense they are positive so we don't know matlab what is right what is wrong sometimes <laughs> but uh, time tells then some some this kind of interaction you will find in um, the hawk and sock system which um, happens with your e coli they have uh, plasmid as plasmid bearing organisms they will uh, show this uh, hawk and sock uh, kind of a system so the host killing genes uh, abbreviated as your hawk and your suppression of killing genes present on the same plasmid so you have the killer and the savior together <laughs> these uh, what you call as um, hawk genes when they are being expressed they actually again uh, make this plasma membrane leaky and that actually results in the death of the organisms which are uh, having these hawk but organisms which are having this hawk they are also having a sock gene that is the suppression of the killing gene this is an antisense rna of the same hawk gene so once this hawk gene is transcribed this antisense sock goes and forms a dimer there and so that the translation of the hawk which is there it, it is suppressed so this hawk gene you can say will not be converted into a protein not be expressed into a protein so the killing of the host would be prevented surprisingly these both genes are present on the same plasmid so when the cells they replicate there would be some cells which will Uh, inherit the plasmid but there would be some which will not those which do not have plasmid they are killed in a certain period of time like how because um, the hawk which is there the product the gene product uh, it will have a, a greater half life it has a greater half life the mrna which is formed of this hawk it has a greater half life so this hawk gene it results in expression and formation of certain proteins which will result in the lysis of the host cell this will not happen with the cell which is containing the plasmid because since it has inherited the plasmid this plasmid will code for the sock gene in the earlier case the cell did not inherit the plasmid it must have got some sock from the cytoplasm of the what you call as the mother cell but its half life being very less it was completely degraded so there was no formation of that dimer or that complementary thing between this uh, hawk product and the sock product the hawk mrna and the sock mrna so the hawk mrna which was stable for a longer period of time was completely expressed and resulted in the death of that organism because it did not have a plasmid now this one which had a plasmid will now code for sock genes which will mask the effect of this hawk gene so it will go and form a what you call as a dimer there and there would be what you call as no hybrid there and there will be no expression of these hawk genes so ultimately the cells which are not having the plasmid they would be eliminated from the environment so presumably this you can say is a kind of a plasmid surviving strategy probably cells must have evolved this mechanism because they know because plasmid is not only carrying these hawk and sock gene but it is also carrying some of the genes like antibiotic resistance it is carrying the genes for heavy metal resistance for some uh, utilization of some substrates which is which may be required by that organism in future so therefore it ensures that only that population survives in future 
which would be able to face a more harsh environment and that population which won't be able to is eliminated before it actually faces that environment so therefore as i told that these numbers of the organism and their interactions within the population is really important when we are studying microbial ecology so therefore like individual populations really need to be focused and then yes of course uh, their interaction with others is also going to be equally that important these are two different branches in microbial ecology which we call as auto ecology and syn ecology so when the populations interacting with themselves we we call it as a auto ecology and then when they are uh, what we call as uh, interacting with the other groups of organism that we call as the syn ecology when they are interacting with themselves and with their environments you can say an individual population that we call as auto ecology and then what happens is like when the organism is say uh, growing near its upper and the lower limits of its growth say uh, like uh, like if the organism is already struggling with the temperature a single population is struggling with the temperature it is growing near its maximum or it is uh, barely surviving near its minimum barely surviving near its maximum temperature i'm not talking about optimum so try to differentiate that i'm talking about the maximum temperature where it is barely surviving and at the same time it is interacted with some other group of population which is detrimental to this then in that case a survival of that particular group of population would be more difficult if at all it is growing at its optimum pace in like in your auto ecology studies if it is growing at its optimum temperature it is growing at its optimum uh, what you call as ph and other things and nutrients and everything is at its optimum probably its interaction with other group of population would be somewhere somewhat different probably its way of interacting with the detrimental effects of the other group of organism interacting with it uh, would be like more elaborate but in the earlier case the organism may just give up because it is already like having its own issues so therefore we really need to uh, understand and explore how microbial populations are interacting with each other you know like we know like once we know the self uh, we know the world we know god so similarly once we know how the organism and a single population is interacting with itself its own members and the environment probably that will give us a more insight like how it is interacting with the other groups of population of the bacteria of the plants of the animals and all other groups